Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixapondu. I want to show you some useful inputs to Octane's gradient texture. Now, Moto has a gradient layer in the shader tree with just tons of useful inputs like incidence angle and slope and uh, displacement height and distance locator, just a ton of things. Super useful, and none of them are available directly in Octane. Um, but Octane does have some of its own nodes that makes up for that uh, that are similar to Moto's and also uh, quite useful, which I'm going to show you starting now. So here we have this gloss material on our binoculars. And when I talk about the gradient in Octane, I'm talking about um, this new texture, whoops, new texture, and mapping and gradient 2. So gradient 2 gives you a gradient editor, just, you know, Moto standard gradient editor. You can middle click to set a key and just drag over here. Maybe a nice bright fire engine red and maybe a nice bright yellow. And what we want to do is add something to this input channel here, another texture, another node that's going to give us um, something to map across the bottom axis of this gradient. And so a common one in Moto is incidence angles. So the angle from facing to glancing, and you can do that in Octane by saying new texture generator fall off map. And this is going to give us something akin to the incidence angle in Moto. Now right off the bat, you can see like the red is pushed way to the edge. That's because it defaults to six on the fall off skew factor. I don't know why. This is, put it to one, and this is really what you're kind of expecting there in terms of incidence angle, right? So glancing, red, middle, orange, or yellow. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of what, um, you know, a similar one to Moto's. There's a couple other modes here you can do, like a normal versus 90 degree. This normal versus I is incidence angle. Uh, normal versus vector at 90. This can do some interesting directional effects if you change the uh, direction over here on this float node going into direction, like here pushing it this way or, or maybe you know, this other way. Like this, uh, whatever, all kinds of stuff to do on here. But um, you might find that useful, but generally you're going to be using just the standard sort of uh, normal versus I ray and, and getting this sort of effect here, which then of course, you know, you can adjust with the skew factor here, right? Okay, so that is useful, but really you can put about just about anything you want into this input. Anything in this generator um, set of nodes here will can I, can I pin that bad boy. I don't know if I can. Um, but let's let's you know let's try something else. So if you want to do a, just a procedural texture, so new texture generator. If I want to do checkers, I can get that into as an input. Let me just get rid of my uh, fall off. Throw that to the side. Um, let me just change the scale here because I think we're way too big. But yeah, okay, go down way down. And you can see, you know, texture uh, checkers can go in the input. Um, any of these guys, like, just select my input here and new texture generator. So noise or marble or turbulence or any of these waves, these can all go into the input uh, the input uh, channel of that gradient. So something like sine wave, you wouldn't normally think of as super useful. If I select that and again, maybe knock down the uh, uh, scale a bit and go in here, you can actually, you know, do some useful stuff with it. Set a few more keys and change colors around. Kind of see how that works. Rainbow of colors, a nice smooth sine wave. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of useful stuff you can do there. One in Moto that's really useful is the occlusion node. And you can do that in uh, Octane with what's called the dirt, uh, the dirt texture which honestly, I don't think is this dirt texture here. I don't think it's quite as useful as Moto's, but it's not horrible by any means. So you can go in here and, and uh, whoops, where'd my gradient go? Give me my gradient back and plug the dirt texture into the input of the gradient so then I can remap those black and white values. Cause that's what you're doing, right? You're just taking these black and white values like from this dirt texture. So this sort of ambient occlusion effect and you're mapping that along the bottom axis of this gradient. So white's going to be on one side and black's on the other, and these are all the rainbow of colors in between. So I go like this, and I go like that, and we've got that, right? So if I make this a little bit more normal over here, and just get rid of these middle guys, you can see that um, ambient occlusion effect happening in the crevices around here, right? In fact, why don't I go with a complementary color so you can make that out a little bit better. There you go. And Dirt Texture does, again, it has some um, channels as well. You can convert the normals. You can uh, change the radius for like a smoother or tighter effect. So the tighter effect there. 
and um, that kind of thing. And you can get these, you know, sort of uh, nooks and cranny type of things going on. But again, I don't think it's quite as good as Moto's, but it's there, and you could use it as an input to the gradient if you are looking to do something useful. Um, there's one other one that's probably useful. I'll do real quick. Let me just uh, stop this. This uh, ground texture, by the way, this cement, this is Richard Yacht's um, architectural collection. He's got it for V-Ray and Octane. They're both pretty awesome. He's got a product one, too, uh, yeah, that he does for V-Ray and Octane. These are all Octane plastics and glass and metals. If you use Octane for Moto, you should really grab this. Same with V-Ray. They're really awesome. I use them a lot for product rendering. Just a quick plug for Richard. I hadn't planned on doing that. You're welcome, Richard. You owe me beer. Uh, okay. So, yeah, let's look at the cone. Turn off this guy. Turn off Binox. Turn back my plane. I get my cone in here. And Moto likes to reset. Octane likes to be reset when you start turning stuff on and off. So I'll refresh it over here. And I think I've got a different mask for my cone. Here's my cone. It's got a gradient in it already with uh, some orange to green, probably the worst color combination you can imagine. And the input, again, we'll just do new texture generator and want polygon side, and that's gonna give us you know, orange on the inside, green on the outside, just like that. So yeah, pretty cool. That'll work. Change my focus, boom. Um, all right, well, there are some useful gradient inputs for you Octane for Moto users. Roll the outro. Yum, yum!